there are no miracle cures, just steps in the right direction. And taking those steps is exactly what I do through ABR therapy. For many years now I've been rebuilding this damaged body of mine. And not only have I made enormous progress, but 22 years after injury, I'm making more progress than ever. Walking is the ultimate goal, and I have every intention of getting up on my feet again and showing it's possible. But what's really important is to live comfortably and actively well into old age. And in order to achieve that, you need to radically improve the structural capacity of a spinally injured and terribly depleted body. My front room is my therapy studio, where all the work is done for many hours, week in, week out. I have three body workers on my team, and Lilo has been working with me for several years now. Much improvement has come from his skilled hands, but anyone can learn to do this work. I work a great deal on myself, and although I would not consider myself a natural at this therapy, through necessity and from experience, I have become highly skilled. This weekend I'm off to Belgium to see Leonard Blum, the founder of ABR, who personally guides me in my work. Unfortunately, Lilo can't make this trip, but my other two body workers, Yanella and Kate, are coming along. I had the good fortune of coming across Leonard Blum at a local rehab center and had the opportunity of watching him teach mothers how to work on their cerebral palsy children. I didn't understand much at the time but had a gut feeling that he knew how to address a seriously damaged body. I followed my instinct and teamed up with him and over the years I have had an education into a higher understanding of the nature of the physical body. I travel to Belgium twice a year to see Mr. Blum at the ABR centre in Hasselt. He'll give me a full assessment, we'll discuss new developments and any new techniques. There'll be training for my therapists and a new set of exercises to go home with. So, here wow. we are. ABR. Cool. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good, morning. <laughs> Good to be back again. Thanks, Steve. Well, lovely handshake. Impressive, <laughs> huh? You're kind of it's coming up. getting things filled up. That's impressive, huh? Hmm. Well done, my friend. One can see that you are showing some industrious qualities, right? So you see hard work and determination, you know, like good old English tradition, you know, personalized and embodied, right? So. <laughs> The vibration, right? So you see, you see this tail, you know, even though it's short, this tail kind of maintains the vibration through and lovely. Well done. So the simple question that comes up very obviously is that what are you guys doing here, right? So what are you looking at? And what are you guys doing? I've seen some sort of funny looking tools, you know, the balls of different sizes, different textures and so on. How is that somehow related to the idea of the therapy or rehabilitation of the damaged spinal cord? Mm -hmm. And the answer is actually quite straightforward, right? That we will look at the total system. We have to understand that the nervous connections itself just making a relatively small part of the whole thing and then yes indeed it affects the muscular performance and so on the neuromuscular things but the question is 
there is a lot more left. There is a lot more there. There is a lot more of the rest of the body. How about the skin? How about the fat? How about all the connections between them? How about all the structures of the muscles? You know, the actual fabric of the muscles, not the muscle fibers, right? But the whole composition of the muscles. How about the attachment to the bones? How about the ligaments? How about all these elements that are normally called passive and that are normally not really showing much on the screen when doing the evaluation. So that's really the essence of the biggest question. What is the total picture? If yes, this is a neuromuscular disconnect. So how large is the total picture and how seriously it has been affected? What kind of collateral damage happened there? And how we can get the collateral recovery through addressing those elements. It is clear there is far more to paraplegia than just nerve damage to the spinal cord. Are we trying to regain the lost sort of nervous connection, right? So you see that severed and uh, butchered, you know, spinal cord. Of course not. That's not our ambition in that sense. But the ambition is actually looking at the other side and saying, well, together with that injury, which is fundamentally neurological, came a lot of the collateral damage. To be introduced to an approach that focuses on what we can achieve, rather than striving for what we can't, was truly liberating. All of those things, they've been erased. And that's what we can be thinking of as a 3D printing. That his body has been built through the 3D printing from the moment of conception and, you know, the fertilized egg all the way to the period of the injury and the damage, which erased all that 3D printing. And now we have to rebuild that 3D print. And to rebuild this 3D print, we have to understand the non nervous life, right? So it's in the non-nervous intelligence, the non-nervous control. Rebuilding the collapse of the structural framework, the 3D printing, is the primary essence of conquering paraplegia. Mm. All right, and that brings us to this point, right? So I'm playing with this ball and it doesn't look very serious, right? It's like, okay, you know, what is this? This is just a ball for some kind of silly exercises, right? You know, like <laughs> up and down, you know, like this sort of aerobics or whatever. But the fact is that if you look at it closer, that's a complex polymer structure, which comes from the really serious science and the serious industries and so on, which have produced all sorts of the complex polymers at huge expense and there's been really very much the 21st century thing. And the great thing about it is that that's where we have the source of the predictable tension length ratios, which can also be integrated into the angular displacement. So we have all the ingredients necessary to start rebuilding this primary constraints, the primary, const the primary control matrix. And that's really the essence of the whole approach. If his own morphological, anatomical intelligence, that his own original 3D printing has been lost and erased, we have to start rebuilding.
With all these hours of dedication to therapy, you may wonder how I get to live any life other than rehabilitation. The reality is I'm a busy, active, outdoor person. And far from limiting this life, ABR therapy has enabled me to still be living this life many years after injury. Our job is to be very straightforward. We are the ones bringing the predictable, systematic relationships into the system. It's all confused, it's all incomplete, it's desperately trying to find kind of the next best solutions, but doesn't succeed <coughs> internally. Matthew has cerebral palsy, and not long ago he wouldn't have had the vocal capacity to give this interview. Now he is pleased to communicate the other improvements he's made. What changes have you noticed over the years? I got, I got more in my arms and my wrists. My chest has opened up and I, I, I can lift my arms up. What I'm saying is that the, the, the transformation of the rib cage here is quite dramatic, right? So you see, if you look at this release of the abdominal wall from the chest wall and then, you know, the axis that we're getting there underneath and into the diaphragm and so on, that's really impressive, right? The first point from where we started was very simple. Like, let's there are elements which are not usable, there are elements which are excluded from the body map, but then on the other hand, there are areas which are kind of borderline healthy, they're still functional. So the first kind of chunk of our work has been really not talking about any miracles, right? So of restoring the paralyzed. We were just, we started with a very simple thing. Okay, let's take what's working and make it better. You know, developing the show the depth and the show the strength, developing the torso, developing all the areas which still had a guaranteed, you know, nerve supply. And then from there, we would be looking at what kind of the additional peripheral engagement is possible, what kind of life spreads through, and then starting to see what we can pick up out of that. And that has been really this thing. There's never been this kind of Wow, you know, you meet this wacky therapist and he promised, you know, like in 20 years you're going to walk, you know, like this kind of crap, right? So that obviously never happened, you know, both me and Steve, we are very rational individuals. So it started very incremental in that sense. We take what's working and make it better and see what kind of extra kind of roots and moves and so on that are reaching into that depleted back and into particularly the paralyzed area and what we can get there and what life we can pick up and then you know from that things start rekindling it and start building and start building and so on. So I was experimenting uh, around the collarbone. Okay. And I came to understand that you know if we worked directly on the ridge we would be addressing the bone itself which with the the damage to that one's a, a good yes. idea. Yes. But then just above, and we're, we're working into that, that, that valley up into the neck. Correct. Yes, and just below we're working on that plateau of the chest. Correct. Just a couple of layers on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lovely. Yes, lovely. and that gives a lovely workout on the base of the neck, and you can go all the way around the ring of the base of the neck, lovely. yes? Yeah, lovely. You see, your mapping of the area is really becoming more and more precise, right? As they differentiate, you can feel the specifics. Well, that's the thing. I, it wasn't that I couldn't find it before. It's that the divisions weren't so defined before. Absolutely. Yes. So you know, now they're defined, I'm, I'm discovering... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's it. So it's just, that's, that's how it works, right? Yes. So as the differentiation occurs, then, you know, like what was blurred and is then becoming more separate and, you know, more articulate mm -hmm. and so on. So that's it. And the knees. So I've been 
working in these mm -hmm. these valleys here. Yeah, very gently, good. Gently. Very good. Yes. Very good. And what we're actually showing with case of Steve, right? So you see those multiple years and so on. It's showing the significance of that collateral damage. And on the other hand, it shows you the significance of this collateral, to say so, right? And secondary recovery that you can extract even though his fundamental CNS <coughs> function, right? So you see his nervous pathways, they have been severed. With such an intrinsically damaged body, it is not only impossible to achieve improvements through muscular effort, it is actually detrimental to pursue such an approach. Working upon your strengths will overshadow the weaknesses, ingrain the changes and even further deform the body. When living an active life, I must be clever how I go about my work, be gentle on my body and where necessary, allow others to do the hard graft. And that was really uh, the journey and you know to a great extent it was the explorations of Steve's situation that you know made me rethink lots of things, made me discover lots of things, you know rethink the role of the skin, rethink the whole uh, you know like attachments uh, to the spinal processes, rethink the understanding of the rib angles and so on. It was like lots of things because nobody went through this journey right so everybody was trying to use the muscles and the signals to do that so in that respect that has been uh, you know really a journey together and it was really based on this mutual understanding and uh, respect and uh, i must say that we even through all these difficult periods and the troubles we really never lost trust in each other no so and i think that that's really the biggest thing is that, you know, like when Steve faced problems that looked like insurmountable and so on, we were looking for the solutions together. And uh, the same thing when he made something which for me looked like reckless and uh, not very intelligent, you know, like for instance when he was uh, using his dog uh, to power his uh, wheelchair and then, you know, like lo and behold, uh, to surprise surprise you know one you know if you go with a dog powered wheelchair through the woods or on the side of the road sometimes you hit some bumps you know and then you actually end up flying out of the wheelchair right and uh, things happen so but even when those things occurred i never lost trust in him you know because he is a live person he wants to try, he wants to, to explore, and then, you know, mistakes like this happen. Again, there are some unpredictable things and there is fragility. So we were still working out of this condition of the respect to each other and out of building things together and, uh, you know, going through this uh, journey. And as I was bringing and developing the new tools, you know, with a different focus, on different tissues, you know, like the attachments, the, you know, the interactions, the intercostals, the, you know, relationship between the ribs, the more digging more into the spinous connections and so on and so forth. And then, you know, going towards the extremities. So that's where we were always looking for this balance and looking for that mutual work together when it would be both the work done on Steve and done by Steve. And then, you know, eventually going and arriving and then today he is a 50 plus but you can see the build you can see the strength you can see that he's continuously progressing and that that in itself is really the largest miracle right so you see a person who was who came to me several years after the spinal cord injury when all the expectations of spontaneous recovery and any kind of miracles or any kind of regrowth of the nerves or whatever has been completely gone 
and then you know the person who by any standards should have already entered the aging process in fact what we're seeing we're seeing that he continuously keeps getting better so did your legs got more volume now oh very much so it's been building slowly but just lately they, they feel firm yes then you know, it's not you used to squeeze there and it was terribly scary how how much I was skin and bone so can you lift the legs now Yes, Leonard remarked six months ago how much I could move them yes. from there, you know, yes. rather than having to assist with my hands, yes? Yeah. You know, I've had movement in them for a long time. Yeah. You know, it was... A year after injury I started getting a little... But it was a year, you know, up until then it was nothing more than a flicker in the leg. And over the next few years before I even met Leonard, I, I got a bit of okay. movement. But it was very much leaning back and just to sort of struggle to raise a very wobbly leg. Whereas now I can sit upright and, and cross those legs like that. Yes? yes? Tilted posterior. In this footage from 2003, you can see how flattened and tilted the rib cage is, with the bottom of the rib cage splayed out at the front of the body and not aligned with the pelvis. I'm pleased here with how much bulk I've already got back on the top of my legs, but the reality is they were still terribly thin, as was my whole body. Note how little depth there is to my trunk, with the missing back, ribs depressed in, and collarbones protruding. So we've got one leg, and we can put that up there, and the other leg, yes. and down there. And move them and back again. Good. Well, let's just see if we can do a little yes. high kneeling along the bench so we can crawl. That's not a problem. Wow, nice. Look at that. And we can go backwards. Ah, you didn't need us. No. <laughs> yeah. But then if I can have you two lovely ladies to assist me. Okay, we're coming. I'm going that side. What do you need to see? Be careful. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, good. Well, good to see you in that powerful shape, right? So you see like... Looking more and more, I see. Remember, you told me once about those that you were watching those you kind know, of old swashbuckling movies. Yeah, yeah that's right. The fifties yeah, with the, the 50s with the big chests and yeah, tight waists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, then you get to the the seventies with the, the the good fleshy bums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get to the nineties and the bums have all gone. Yeah, the yeah, chest. You know, it, yeah. It's all muscular up yeah. here, and it gets to the pelvis, and everything just falls away. Hmm. Yes. So that's kind of. So you kind of started looking more and more like Starting with the 50s. Starting with the 50s. Then we get the 70s. Yeah, 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 that's it. So you kind of, without losing the 50s, you yes, know, that's, yes. that's, that's, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, look, indeed, the, the, you see the transformation here is, is, is really quite spectacular, right? So you can, you know, it's the usual story. When you fill up at the back, right? So you see, we're getting back to this thing. Once you fill up dorsally, ventrally, the thing shuffles, right? Okay. So, but again, in the sitting position, you can see that, you know, that work that you've done on the clavicle and so on, that brings really the exposure of the upper chest. And then, you know, that's really the differentiation between the first and second. And again, I still think, I, I do believe that, like, again, people understand the miracles wrongly. They understand the miracles in the movie sense. Yes. Instead of understanding them in real life. In real life, it yeah. happens differently, right? And as, as I said, what we see with your continuous progress, with your continuous evolution, you know, let's say even despite you know, and, and kind of contrary to the aging process, this is really remarkable, spectacular, and you know, like deserves like further exploration, right? So you mm -hmm. see, by means which exceeding my humble capacities or whatever, but it's really sure or, or yours, right? Which is showing the the amazing, amazing capacities that the human body has for future, you know, for further regeneration and, and improvement. Yeah.
I, like many, live in awe of the wonders of modern medicine. But for all its achievements, it has little concept of healing. Surgery can piece together a broken body, and drugs will keep the infection at bay. But when it comes to healing, the body is expected to work its own magic. This is fine with a minor scrape, but an injury that comes back to haunt you is one that never truly healed in the first place. And when dealing with a spinal injury, the body has fallen well below the point from which it can naturally recover. Through ABR therapy, we do not heal the body. We bring to life the body's natural healing mechanisms. The work we are doing brings a concept of healing to 21st century health. Well, it's been a good trip. Mr. Bloom is pleased with progress, as am I. My therapists here have learned new skills and we have new approaches to work on. And one of the great things about ADR therapy is that it empowers us as spinally injured individuals to take control of our own health, to slowly but surely improve our physical health and better our futures. So, now we're off to the station, catch the train home back to England, and tomorrow we'll crack on with the work. So, that's it. Woohoo! Oh, what's an Well, He's bought my Citizen Smith a bit. I did it. I quite like it. He's still filming now.